Hi geezers and geezettes and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm going to do another one in the Mission Builder series and it's a viewer request. And it's to shed some light on the black art of flags. And really it's not a black art at all. Um, it's rel relatively simple and straightforward uh, once you know what you're doing. And it's a very simple process. So I'll give you a few examples. I can't cover every single example of using a flag because there's such a variety of things that you could utilize it for. But I'm going to run through some basics with you. So I hope you'll enjoy that. So stay with me. Set up this little scenario here. And this is my aircraft, me Spitty. It's a client aircraft that I set up. I've given it some waypoints. They're pretty pointless, but uh, if, I, if it was AI, then I could have utilized those waypoints. What I've also done is I've set up a second element here, and I've set them to follow me. So I've set them up into a close formation initially with the follow me command, and the formation that I've asked them to perform is left echelon and close to each other again. So it's going to be a tight formation. Now what I want to happen is I'll fly here, and then I'll enter this particular zone. And when I enter this particular zone, I want the second element to break off, go to waypoint four, and then attack this e boat here. And that was set up with just a simple one trigger. Now you'll notice that I've called it stop follow and it's flag 12. Now I always list the flags when I turn them on by typing into the name the flag number. So what I said is when I'm in that zone, which is that aircraft there, I've asked for flag 12 to be on. So I said flag on, 12. And then I gave the second element a push task. And that push task was to switch waypoint. And I've asked them to go to waypoint 4. I've also said that I want a sound out, so it's a radio click. And then a message saying visual on target skipper. Tally ho. Now that's only in writing, it's not a recording. So, why did I give it flag 12? Well, basically, the follow me command has a stop condition, and you have to implement a stop condition for the second element to break off and go to waypoint 4. So, that stop condition is based on user flag 12. So, that's why I put 12 into the flag on. So essentially, flag 12 being on stops the second element following me. And then they will perform another task. So that's one example of the flag. Here, you'll see, I also give them uh, an advanced waypoint action here that can be switched by pushing a task. So what I said was, perform task, switch waypoint, and go to waypoint 4. So whatever happens when they stop following me, they'll go straight to waypoint 4. Now at waypoint 4, I gave them a bombing command to bomb that particular e-boat. And the bombing command is basically set up as bombs, release all bombs, make it a group attack, so both aircraft will attack, and make it a dive bombing session. And that's basically it. The process is going to be, I'll fly along here. As soon as I get into this zone, which I've called switch, this, uh, these, this element will stop following me. They will go to waypoint four, and then they will bomb that e-boat. And flag 12 was put in there to stop them following me. Hope that was clear, and let's watch it in mission and see what happens. Okay, so here we are in mission. I'm just going to turn off to the right slightly. There's the second element behind me. They'll join, they'll form up closely shortly. There we go. They formed up on me. I should have made it right echelon really, but there we go. So let's see what's happened when we get into the trigger zone. There we go. 
and they've both peeled off. What they'll do now is they will attack the e-boat. So as you can see, Flag 12 worked, they stopped following me, and they completed their mission. The next example of a flag is one that I would use to end a mission. So what I have is I have the aircraft returning home to its home airbase on the um, Normandy map. So it's returned to Azaville, it's a Spitfire, it's done what it needs to do on its mission, and then I want to end the mission. So what I've done is, at the end of the runway, to both the left and to the right, just in case someone makes the decision to go left or right when they've landed, I've set up two trigger zones, and it's called EOM-1 and EOM-11. So that basically stands for end of mission. What I would like to do is, as soon as the Spitfire has landed, and it's turned off the runway either left or right, then 30 seconds later, the mission will end. So it's just another very uh, simplistic example of utilization of a flag. So let's look at the triggers for that, which again are very simple. So the first trigger, I've called it end of mission. And I've labelled it flag 6, because I'm using flag 6 to progress. So let's have a look at that. So what I've said is, when the Spitfire is in either EOM-1, this, or EM, EOM-11, this trigger zone, and its altitude is below 80 feet, then flag 6 will turn on, and a message will be sent to all saying that the, mesh, the mission will end in 30 seconds. The reason why I've put the unit's altitude lower than 80 is because I don't want anything triggered whilst the aircraft is in the air. It must be on the ground and it must be taxiing. So then what I've said is, time since flag. 30 seconds, end the mission. And that's it, basically. Very simple, very straightforward. So flag 6 is on, and flag 6, 30 seconds later, will end the mission. So let's show you that working in the sim now. And here we are in the pit. What I'll do is I'll do a flyover, I'll do an overhead break, and I'll show you the reason why I'm doing that. Essentially, you know that I put at the end of the runway two trigger zones, but I didn't want them to activate until the aircraft is on the ground. So I'm going to show you here that they don't activate until I'm on the ground. So I'm flying over one of those trigger points now, and no messages. So we'll do the overhead break, we'll come back in and land, and I'll show you the trigger working. Now the one thing you must bear in mind, that I am showing you very simplistic methods of using flags, and there are far more convolute and difficult circumstances that you can use flags with in the longer term. By the way, this is not going to be a textbook landing, I'm just trying to show you how the flags work. So to explain again why I use this particular trigger. The problem is that with this particular aircraft you can never tell when it's going to be back at base so that you can end the mission. So the time more than function to end a mission just wouldn't work. Hence the reason why I utilize a flag to be able to end the mission when the aircraft is definitely on the ground and at its home airbase.
what I think I'll do is I will turn right off the end of the runway and go through one of the triggers. As you can see, I took into consideration that someone might come off the runway to the left also, which is why there are two trigger zones. There we go. There's the first message. Mission will end in 30 seconds. And there you go. The mission ended as instructed. So that's the use of a very another very simplistic flag. Well, I hope you found that brief introduction into the utilisation of flags useful and helpful. And if you did, please comment below. And I'd like to thank you for watching. So I'll catch you later. Ciao for now. <laughs>